The following is a hoop ball presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. That was a wild weekend for me, guys. I don't know about the rest of you. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious indeed. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Fantasy NBA Today. I am your host, Dan Bespris, here on this wonderful Monday, September the 16th. We are coming down the chute, man. Tomorrow, tomorrow, September 17th, is two weeks from the start of October, two weeks from the start of preseason. Actually, today, I think, is two weeks from the start of preseason. Tomorrow, two weeks from the start of October, and you know, friends, that fourth, that fourth Tuesday, that's the start of the season. We are five weeks from the start of the NBA season and one day. It's time to, uh, time to start getting excited. I want to tell you guys a little story about my weekend. But first, this podcast is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. HawaiianIsles.com is the website. Hawaiian, I-S-L-E-S dot com. The website, Hawaiian Isles on Amazon.com. Get it sent directly to your doorstep because that's the awesomeness of the modern age we live in. H-I Kona Coffee on Twitter. Mix and match a nine pack, a nine pack for eight and a half bucks a pack over at HawaiianIsles.com. Mix and match. You can get a little bit of everything. Ships anywhere in the United States. Free shipping on that nine pack. Again, under... Uh, excuse me, I got that number wrong. It's about $9 per bag. $9 per bag, nine pack. It's like nine and change. Check it out. HawaiianIsles.com. Our buddies. Okay, so many of you saw what was supposed to be a really fun exercise over the weekend or at least you start the start of it on friday we started an industry mock draft i'm really excited it's still going right now by the way we're still rumbling along we're like uh seven eight rounds in at this point depending on when you're listening to this show monday morning with some outstanding outstanding industry pros in this field I'll give you the rundown on these guys, uh, and we can do it in order of, of how they had to pick. <laughs> um, the Welsh, he had first overall pick. Kyle McCune of Basketball Monster, Adam King at Fantrax, Josh Lloyd, Red Rock, and of course, Basketball Monster, Greg Ehrenberg, also BBM, myself, Matt Straup of Roto World, Adam Stock of Elite Fantasy Basketball, Alex Ricklean of a lot of different places. Jonas Nader, Road to World, my guy. Matt Smith, Basketball Monster. And Bogman, Lord Bogman, the Bogs of ITL, also uh, like Lord Welsh. So that's the draft right now. This is an industry draft started Friday afternoon. I was live tweeting it through about the first 40 picks. We got through over three rounds uh, between 4 p.m. and about 9 p.m. here on the Pacific Coast. So it was it was a slow draft, but it was moving along at a pretty good clip. And I was hoping to do the same thing on Saturday because it looked like a lot of you were really having fun following along. And if you'd like to see all of that stuff, you can follow me on Twitter at Dan Bespris, D-A-N-B-E-S-B-R-I-S. I I know many of you are checking out the show for the first time, so welcome. Pleasure to have you. And then I woke up Saturday to a completely flooded bathroom in my home, and the whole thing got thrown out of whack. It was also a day I had to get my car switched because the lease expired. I mean, come on. So Saturday was cooked. Sunday ended up being cooked because of the after effects of not getting through all the stuff from the previous day. And so it brings us now to Monday where I wasn't able to tweet almost anything that went on. And what I'm going to do, this guy Mendo on Twitter let me know that you can actually post the draft board publicly. And I'm going to do that when the draft is over. So, you know, we're almost eight rounds in. It's only a 13-round mock because, you know, we don't need to go ultra deep here. That's not what you guys are all that worried about. And uh, we'll post that sucker when it's done. So that'll probably be tomorrow, if I had to guess. So I, I think you'll see that on Twitter on Tuesday again, at D-A-N, and the last name is B-E-S, B 
B as in boy, S as in Sam. B-E-S-B again, R-I-S again. Find me on Twitter. You can follow me that way. That'll be a lot of fun. So that's the industry mock draft. And then the reason I brought that up, not you know in relation to the weekend, number one, but also number two, next week we're going to start having pros from that draft on the podcast. Maybe I'll even go end of this week, depending on how fast we get it done. We'll talk to all 11 other pros in that mock We'll break down their teams. We'll talk about all their picks, how they got to those points. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to get to hear from the best of the best of the best. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get everybody in there. There's some great pros that we weren't able to fit in the mock. I mean, that's the reason to do like a 10-round 14-teamer, just to get more awesome voices in. And maybe I'll do that next time. Mental note. Note to self. Uh, but that'll be the start of... I'm hoping 11 consecutive podcasts where if I can if I can run the schedule together just right. And that's going to be amazing. That'll start just in a few days. This week, by popular demand, the Yahoo ADP Breakdown Week begins here on Fantasy NBA Today. I don't know how far we're going to get today. I don't know how far we're going to get tomorrow. But at some point, we're going to make it through the Yahoo Top 100. And we're going to break down every single name in some measure of detail, obviously some faster than others. You know, we've talked about a lot of these top guys before, and it's going to be less about the individual player and more about where Yahoo has them and sort of how aggressive that is. They got real aggressive on some guys, and then they got real passive with some other ones. And that's this week. I mean, I think this is going to be so entertaining. Number one, we're going to talk to the usual suspects here. We'll talk to Neil Rochelani, Brandon Marcus, Uh, We'll get a coach update. Obviously, Team USA is done, so we'll talk a brief DFS hit from coach later in the week, Adrian Benjamins. And then, depending, again, on how schedule shakes out, we might just dive into some of these pros. Bogman, the Welsh. I know Jonas, he's he's champing at the bit. We've been texting about it. He's ready to go. Really excited, by the way, because there are a couple of pros in this that I haven't had on the podcast before. Greg Ehrenberg has not been on the show. Adam Stock has not been on the show. Uh, Adam King... And Matt Straup of Roto World, who, you know, I, these guys, I'm going to have so much fun with all these guys, but a particularly strong tip of the cap to Matt Straup, who is a recent winner of 30 deep, the toughest league available, 30 of the best pros all together in a CBS league. And uh, Straup is always at the top of that thing. He's just so sharp. Such a sharp dude. Pretty, uh, pretty stoked to have him on the pod here coming up in a little bit as well. Uh, So today, we'll just dive right in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know everybody's like, you talk too much at the beginning, but I thought that was mostly fantasy relevant today, other than a story about my bathroom flooding. And let's dive right in. Yahoo ADPs, let's do it. Number one. I mean, okay, number one is loose terminology. Number 1.4, which is also the lowest ADP on Yahoo. The great Anthony Davis. This is 9cat, by the way, uh, is how I'll be breaking it down. Although I believe that Yahoo lists their ADPs the same, regardless of your format. I can check on this because I have an 11-category head-to-head league and plenty of 9-category roto leagues. And the ADPs are a dead heat between the two. So, yeah, it rolls them all together. So Yahoo lists their ADPs. This is for all their different types of leagues. Largely, I'm sure, you know, their standard over there is 9-cat. So that'll probably have the strongest weight on these things. But, you know, for a guy like a Russell Westbrook, there's obviously going to be a big 8-cat factor. James Harden, same thing. Uh, And then guys with, there might be some points leagues floating around. Not a ton, but they have a few. So that'll also have some kind of impact. But I would say that the heaviest weight that goes into these is 9-cat, which is what we are working with and what a lot of you will be as well, if you're on Yahoo. Anthony Davis, number one in 9-cat, makes a lot of sense to me. Talked about this before. We know what he can do when he's playing his full complement of minutes. I don't think the Lakers are going to rest him all that much this year. They almost can't afford to. So mid-70s in games, and the only guy ahead of him last year on a per-game basis was James Harden, who's likely to take a small step back. So if you think that the edge in games played there is not much or close between Harden and AD this year, which I do, I think it'll be, you know, maybe three games. 
Is that enough to push Harden to top him? I don't know. Maybe. I'm going to say no. Because AD should be in a stratosphere all by himself. I mean, when he was playing his full complement of minutes. And that's, remember, that's excluding down the stretch last year where he played seven or eight games where he was just playing half the game. That still only got him to 56 total games on the year. But he was just dominating before that stretch. So he's my number one guy. I totally agree with this one. You've got to swing for the fences at number one. You have these five guys to pick from that are clearly a cut above. You just got to go for it. You got to go for the guy that could almost win you multiple categories by himself. You just have to. He was so good last year. And he doesn't turn the ball over. He only had two turnovers a game. Steph Curry, number two on Yahoo, which surprised me. I don't know that that was the case a week ago. I think he's moved up. Should have printed it out from last week. Uh, I thought he was behind Harden the last time I checked. But anyway, he's a number two now at 2.5. This is a tough one for me. I, I think I'd slide him behind James Harden just for the durability thing. We all can agree that he's going to have a nice season with not you know not having the help that he had the last couple of years with Kevin Durant out, Clay Thompson out, D'Angelo Russell in. Um, but he was well behind James Harden last year. He's gonna he would have to change things considerably. I mean, you're talking about he got his 19 and a half shots a game last year. Is there a world where he gets up to the Harden level of 24? I doubt it. But he could get up towards Harden if Harden comes back towards him and is taking 21 or 22, and Steph is at 21. Yeah, then they'll be close, but the durability edge is a big one on the Harden side. I think you're just see Steph's turnovers go up. Both guys very good at free throw shooting. Harden obviously takes more. Steph better percentages. Harden far more on the defensive side. I think I give the edge to Harden there. Then you probably go Steph. And for me, uh, well, he doesn't in this one. Giannis at 3.6. By the way, Steph Curry 2.5. Harden 3.3, Giannis 3.6. Harden was the third overall pick. Uh, Giannis at 3.6. I think I've got Cat ahead of him this year. Those two guys actually had the exact same per-game numbers last season, and that's with a whole bunch of Jimmy Butler baloney going on in Minnesota. Carl Anthony Towns is going to be a wrecking crew this season, and he's always playing. You know, he was number four. Well, Giannis was number three over that same stretch, so... Those two guys are fairly neck and neck for me. I think you see more rest days for Giannis than you do for Cat. So with that, you know, you say, do you want a guy with, you have two guys with the exact same value. If one of them will reliably play an extra three or four games, you probably go that guy. The only reason you go Giannis there is if you're really making that hard push towards more of the counting stats. I personally like Carl Anthony Towns' higher free throw percentage. He actually hit more three-pointers than Giannis, despite being a center. Rebounds were close. Scoring was close. Uh, Giannis had the edge in steals and assists and slightly in blocks. Uh, but still, you know, the, the edge there in a couple of those things for me wasn't enough to make the big difference. Yeah, if Giannis can shoot 76% at the line on super high volume, that's less of a, of a, a thump than what he had done previously. I just think Cat is a more reliable choice. But, I, I, you know, you're splitting hairs at a certain point. At a certain point, you're splitting hairs. And that's your usual top five. You know, we've all, it's the same group of five. And, by, you know, you're just rearranging deck chairs to a certain degree. I happen to think that AD has a bit of an edge over the other four. I think that Steph and Harden are in that second tier. I think I'd probably put James above him. I think Harden's my, my second tier guy. Steph is probably third. And then the Cat Giannis combo. This is Roto, remember. So, where a guy like Giannis or Cat, maybe you say, where a guy like Cat has the edge in head-to-head because you almost know he's going to be playing all the time. Uh, a missed game here and there in Roto doesn't really kill you. So, if you want to go one way or the other, and then it's a little bit is about team build as well. You're looking at who's going to be there towards the end of the second round. Uh, centers are usually floating around at that point. Not a ton of point guards. Usually the guys like the Lucas, the Drews. If you want to put Devin Booker in there, the Trey Youngs, those guys are usually off the board before you get to your picks towards the end of the second round. Guys like Andre Drummond, Rudy Gobert, Miles Turner, Nick Vucevic, those guys are still around. 
So maybe that's part of your th- a thought assessment here, why you go with a Giannis instead. Hey, we get my, I get my small forward. I get a little bit of an assist bump there, whereas I can get it a center in round two. I'm always for the guy to just take the best dude in the first round, the one that you think is going to give you a little bit more of an edge. But again, between those two guys, there really isn't a whole lot. You can slip a paper in between it. And you could easily flip the paper upside down, and that could be right as well. Cat's ADP is five. Not surprisingly, you've got the first five guys, and you've got an ADP that maxes out at five. Things start to bounce around a little bit after that. Not so much in number, but just in where guys get picked. Nikola Jokic, 6.4 is the next number on the docket. I'm starting to refer to the sixth pick as Jokic Island just because, and it's a hard thing to say, it's Jokic Island. Maybe I should call it Nico Land. That's truly awful. And if I was... uh, Boy, if I had less integrity, I would have edited that out. But I'm going to leave it in so you guys can see how stupid I am. Uh, Nikola Jokic at 6, he's 6.4. He's going at 6 in every single draft. He's the guy you take there. He's playing. He's durable. He does stuff across the board. He has the, you know, he wasn't a first round. He was right on the cusp, I guess I should say, being a first round per game guy last year. He was number 13, actually, but he played 80 games. And it's tough to say that anything wasn't good. You know, 20 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, a 3-pointer, 1.4 steals, 0.7 blocks, above average free throw and field goal percent, and then 3 turnovers, which is pretty easy to stomach. I know that on a per-game basis, uh, there are guys that had better years. Vooch actually had a better year last year than, you know, like a Joel Embiid. On a per-game basis, he was better. But, and even Damian Lillard was actually just a hair better than Jokic. They were almost neck and neck. So you could make the argument either way, but it's really tough to go against a guy who's getting you stuff in every statistical category. I can dig it. Joel Embiid. At 7.9 is the next one on the list, and I just can't get behind this one. I simply cannot. There are ways of breaking down injury-prone basketball players, and I don't know that you want to call Embiid injury-prone. He's just not ever 100%. So it's, it's constant monitoring, constant maintenance. He seemed pretty healthy last year, and then he only played 64 ballgames. Remember, he missed a bunch of time down the stretch. Missed the beginning of the postseason. He played 63 the year before. When do we get the 70-game year out of Joel Embiid? Will we ever get the 70-game year out of Joel Embiid? If it's this year, you're going to look like a genius. But if it's not, your team's in disarray after the first round. I cannot, in good conscience, recommend taking a guy who always, to this point in his career, has missed at least 17 to 18 games and generally more. He was number 17 by totals last year, which tells you how important these first-round guys are because he was number 9 by on a per game and only played 64 games. Pretty impressive to stay inside the middle of the second round when you're missing 18 ball games. Kawhi Leonard is another example of that. But if you're debating between those types of guys at this point, don't you have to go with the one that's going to be on the floor? Maybe not. And and this is where things get a little bit kooky, too. LeBron James, 8.3. LeBron James, who not only finally had an actually hurt season last year, even when he was healthy, he was number 24. He's a massive drag on your free throw percent and on your turnovers. And he's not quite the Hercules in field goal percent that he used to be as he stepped farther away from the bucket. I think you see a return to a measure of efficiency this year. Obviously, having better teammates is going to help. I'm a little bit worried about health. I hope he proves me wrong as a Laker fan, but I don't think the free throw percent is coming back. Well, this is too early, and I hope that this steers people, the public, as it were, Same deal as, like, public betters. I hope this steals the public towards him in the first round because then you got guys falling. In almost all of the drafts that I have seen or done or reviewed, Damian Lillard has gone seventh. And here he is at 8.5. He's actually the ninth man on the board. 
in Yahoo ADP. So I think if you're getting him at 9, that's a bit of a steal. At 10, or 9.9 as it were, is Kawhi Leonard. And that's even perhaps a little bit early for him. I like Kawhi Leonard more than Joel Embiid this year, which I think is going to freak some people out, but it really shouldn't. It, it, it actually makes a ton of sense. Number one, he was better than Joel Embiid last year in nine category, and the one-and-a-half turnover gap between the two guys played a big port, uh, part in that. Uh, their scoring was similar. Kawhi hit more three-pointers. Embiid had the edge in rebounds by a lot. Kawhi in steals, Joel in blocks. Kawhi, believe it or not, in field goal percent, and Kawhi in free throw percent. He had a fantastic year. He was number seven on a per-game basis, but, of course, he only played 60 games. I'm in the process over here, if you guys hadn't noticed, of talking myself into Kawhi Leonard because I don't think he misses 22 games again with the Clippers. The West is just not as much of a cakewalk as the East was to get his team into the playoffs. There's so many moving pieces in L.A., that, yes, maybe he does skip 12 of their 13 back-to-backs. Maybe he skips all of them. I think they have 13. And that takes him down to 69 max. So you're praying he plays in every one of those other games. He won't. But I still think you're looking at 65 for Kawhi Leonard. 65 games of the number 7 guy would be enough for about number 15. So this is still too early for him in my book. But I definitely take him over Joel Embiid who still hasn't shown that he can actually play. It's not even, I mean, some of those are rest days, but some of them is just, he's out. These guys are risky, man. These are guys I would look at more towards the turn. If they fall any past that, that's another spot to grab them. At 11.5 on the ADP scale is Bradley Beal, who I think makes way more sense in Roto than he does in head-to-head. He was number 10 by totals last year, and he's just going to throttle as long as Washington is not mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, which may happen early, but remember, the East sucks, so there may be an eight seed getting in that's four games under 500, so even if Washington is 20 games under, they're still down to the last two weeks, basically, before they're mathematically out of it. I'm not talking about logically out of it, because they'll be logically out of it by the third game of the year. I'm talking about mathematically, He's going to play a ton of minutes, take a ton of shots. He has actually far better field goal percent than I think most people realize. Big numbers coming up for Bradley Beal. I have no problem taking him around here. And if he sits out the last week, week and a half, who gives a crap? You milked him for his 75 games or whatever it is. I think he's going to play a lot. At 12.7 is Kyrie Irving. That, by the way, is the end of your first round if you're keeping track here on Yahoo. This would be the 12th overall pick at 12.7, the ADP. Kyrie's another one of these guys. He was number 10 on a per-game basis. He played 67 games last year, and that put him at number 15 in overall ranking. I think there's a perfectly reasonable chance he's at number 10 or slightly better in per-game numbers this year, because remember, no Kevin Durant. Paul George is starting the year hurt, and he's in a totally new scenario. Uh... Who, who among the guys behind Kyrie is going to pass him on a per-game basis? I don't know that anybody will. Might be like one or two names out there you could throw at it, see if it sticks. Maybe Jokic. Maybe Dame. I doubt it. Maybe Jimmy Butler. I doubt it. I think Kyrie Irving is a really nice pick towards the end of the first round. I think he's going to play near 70 games this year because I think the Nets need him to. Uh, and he's incredibly efficient brilliantly efficient. In fact, last year, you could almost argue was one of his best seasons ever, despite the issues in Boston. Uh, I'm, I'm very much on the Kyrie Irving freight train. That's the end of the first round of Yahoo ADP. That gets us through 12, although it doesn't, I don't know that we need to necessarily go about our business this particular way. Are we going by 12s anymore? Meh. Nah. I mean, we're just going through it. We're seeing where everybody's getting drafted on Yahoo. This is important to know, by the way, as we, as we briefly put a pin in the, the counting, because most of us are using Yahoo leagues, not all, but many, and the draft window does steer what people are doing. Talked about this with Adrian on Friday's show, so I think it segues pretty well to today's very brief tangential discussion here. 
you need to have your list and you need to see the list of the website you're using, whether it's Fantrax, Yahoo, ESPN, whatever. Understand what everybody else is looking at in your league because you're looking at it too. And if a bunch of names are lined up and, you know, you're at pick 45, you're probably going to pick from someone closer to the top than the middle of the remaining list because you're all trying to figure out who's going to be on the board when it gets back to you. So the, the order that Yahoo puts these guys on their machine does play a role. I want to take a moment to remind you guys of our partnership with MyBookie.ag. The countdown begins, man. The five weeks from the NBA season is also five weeks from when I can start betting on stuff. I'm not a big football guy. I know many of you are. It is a very large and uh, well-liked sport here in the United States. So if you're making good picks in your mind, you might as well just do them online. It's like finding five bucks on the street. You'd pick it up. You'd pick it up. So go to mybookie.ag. Do the smart thing. If you're going to bet football or basketball or baseball or whatever, do it with mybookie, my B-O-O-K-I-E dot A-G. Use promo code TODAY, T-O-D-A-Y, to activate the doubling of your first deposit. They call that a deposit match in the modern lexicon. Promo code T-O-D-A-Y. Type in that word when you're setting up your account and MyBookie will match your first deposit up to $1,000. Play, win, get paid at mybookie.ag. Back to brass tacks here as we embarked upon what you, I guess you could call the Yahoo ADP second round. And the next man on the list is an interesting one. In fact, the next two former Oklahoma City Thunder teammates, Paul George and Russell Westbrook. Paul George at 13.5, Russell Westbrook at 14.4. Trending in the same direction. Paul George trending down because of his shoulder injuries. Sounds like he probably won't start the season healthy. Guess we'll wait and see on that one, but all reports suggest that he will not. I cannot in a Roto League good, in good faith suggest ever drafting someone who's not healthy to start the year. I, I think that's the death knell in Roto is stashing. I can get behind it in head-to-head because all you have to do is stay afloat, maybe try to be a, a little bit better than average and then you can get a shot in the arm halfway through the year. Because in head-to-head, if you're in good standing, getting a, a first-round guy for the second half of the year could be colossal, or even the last two-thirds of the year, or whatever it turns out to be. In Roto, as we just saw, we're looking at totals here. Guys that miss 15 to 20 games, it's damn hard to be better than a second-round pick. Almost impossible. Steph Curry played 69 games last year, and he was a first-round pick. Anthony Davis played 56 games last year, and he was still number 11 in overall value. So there's a universe where a guy like Paul George, who put up number three per game value last season, plays 60-something games and is a first-round pick. I just don't think he's going to have the same massive season with this loaded Clippers team. They have a lot of bodies over there that are all going to do stuff. Paul George, you know, he's still second in command. He was second in command behind Russell Westbrook last year, but he you know, got his shots. He's, he'll get his shots, but Kawhi Leonard is the lead dog. There's still a little Williams floating around. There's going to be an adjustment period when he comes back from his injuries. He's going to be a little bit rusty, so even when he comes back, it's going to take some time. What do we think we're going to get out of him this year? 60 healthy games? A little bit more than that? I can't do it. He's got to fall farther than this for me. He's got to be much closer to the end of the second round before I'm considering someone are out to start the year. It just, ugh, to take those zeros. And then Russell Westbrook, who we're also seeing trending down pretty hard, and, and reasonably so. I think most people that are in nine cat drafts these days are, are willing to... He's finally getting picked where he should. He played 73 games last year. He's number 25 by totals. He was closer to 30 on a per-game basis. In fact, I believe he was right on the mark. Yeah, number 30. He'll play his 70-some-odd games. He's a pretty durable guy. He'll have his big popcorn numbers and terrible percentages. And if he falls to the end of the second round or later, I think you take him 
and you just hope that maybe the free throw thing between the ears gets a little bit better. If it does, you're in business. If it doesn't, okay, so, you know, he's number late 20s instead of mid-20s. That's, that's something your team can absolutely stomach, but 14, hard no. Hard no. Jimmy Butler, 16.4. I enjoy this one. I know he's got those Tibbs miles on his legs, and that is something to be concerned about. I can't just brush it off. I think it would be doing a disservice to our analysis here to say a guy like Kyrie Irving might get to 70 games, but then say Jimmy Butler definitely will get to 70 games. He played 65 games last year. He's constantly dinged up. The wear and tear on that dude is very real. But here's the other side. Much like Kyrie Irving, when he's healthy and running the team himself, he's a first-round guy. And it's an easy first-round guy. His steals are stellar. The 10 games he played in Minnesota this year, before the trade happened, he was an easy first-round guy. He was averaging a block a game. And he's done that for a long time. He did that his last few years in Chicago. But he hasn't really ever been a full-season guy. Played 76 games under Fred Hoiberg when Tibbs wasn't grinding him the way that Tibbs does. He played 82 games his sophomore season in the NBA, but he's only averaging 26 minutes a game. Since he's been a 33- to 38-minute guy, he's generally in that 65-70 to 70 range. And last year it was 65 between the two teams, obviously missing a few due to the trade. The previous year in Minnesota, it was only 59. You can't draft Jimmy Butler and expect him to play 75 games. You just can't. If you're drafting him, you got to be gunning for 72. That has to be your goal, and you have to be okay with the idea that he might not get there. But, but, as we just talked about, Kyrie Irving, last year, number 10 on a per-game basis, 67 games, Number 15 by totals. Very reasonable expectation for Jimmy Butler. And every game he eclipses that 67 mark, if he can, he pushes himself another slot higher. Hey, uh, two things before we rumble along to the next guy. I think it's Kemba. Two things. Number one, we are running a contest. These don't happen all that often, actually, because... Uh, well, we're just beefing up that side of our operation. We've got a contest running at Hoop Ball Fantasy on Twitter. All you have to do is retweet and follow one particular tweet. you got to follow the account and then retweet just the one particular tweet, which has been retweeted, I think, 50-something times so far. And you will be eligible for a free draft guide. We're doing a drawing on Wednesday of this week. I actually think I'm doing the drawing. Am I the honorary uh, name picker? I guess so. Uh, Retweet that one tweet. That's all you got to do. Follow the account. Retweet this one. It's uh, the tweet was sent out on the 11th of September at 3.06 p.m. So if you got to go find it, that's the way to do it. I'm going to try to make it very evident today with some uh, additional quote retweets and what have you. Uh, But go follow and retweet that one thing. You will become eligible to win a free draft guide. In a drawing we're doing on Wednesday, two days from today. So go do that. If you don't win the freebie, get the draft guide. It's still $15.99. The early B-150 comes out a week from today. And I will explain more of what that is at the end of this show. But suffice it to say that prices are about to go up. You have a week before the early B-150 price goes up. Draft guide price is going up. It's, uh, it's coming now. This is sort of like end of sale time. So if you've been thinking about it and you've been mulling it over, you got to go do it immediately and then go retweet that deal. Maybe you'll win something for free. That's, I mean, why not, right? It takes no effort at all. Kemba Walker at 16.6. This is the stark opposite selection to Jimmy Butler. Kemba Walker is Mr. Durable to this point in his career. He was ahead of Kyrie Irving in totals last year. Number 14 to Kyrie's 15, despite paying 15 additional games. Here's why I actually am a little bit less. And you guys know I love to get my safe guys. And Kemba Walker's very much a safe guy. He was number 21 on a per-game basis last year. There's limited upside. We sort of know who Kemba Walker is. 
last year was as high as it could go because he played all 82 games on a good season. So 14 is kind of your best case scenario. And I'm totally fine with taking him in the middle of the second round because 14 is your best case, but 25 is probably your worst. There's almost no chance that he ruins your team this year. And that's a big thing to get through the first two rounds doing. Don't get someone who's going to ruin your basketball team. But if, say, the guy like Jimmy Butler was still on the board, or I don't, you know, Kyrie's not going to still be there, but we're using these guys as examples, there's upside there. Where what if Jimmy Butler happens to play 73 games this year? Boom, first round pick. He would have the edge. And in a games cap roto league, you want better production per game. Sure. It's great to get the extra five games out of a really good basketball player because most likely 70 games of Jimmy Butler plus 12 of a waiver wire pickup is going to be worse than 82 games of Kemba Walker, right? The extra 12 games does make up the difference. But at the same time, what if your waiver wire pickup is great? What if you get a great waiver wire guy? Maybe that cancels it out. These are things you do have to weigh in your mind on the mathematics side of this. Just don't take anybody that could kill you this early in the draft. Take someone you know is going to have to be out there barring a catastrophic injury. They're not going to be able to take the year off. Luka Doncic at 17.8. That's really high in 9-cat. That's really high in 9-cat. I do think that 8-cat is weighing heavily into this one, but... Luca, who has fantastic popcorn numbers, great score, nice threes, great rebounds, great assists. There are some pretty obvious holes in his game. He doesn't get a ton of steals, about won a game in 32 minutes last year, doesn't block shots, field goal and free throw percent were not good, and turnovers were high. For him to get into this top 20 neighborhood, he's going to have to play all 82 games, and he's going to have to fix probably both of his percentages. They're both going to have to come up. And I know that we do have evidence of him being a better free throw shooter. uh, So maybe that happens, but you know, to get a guy, he was number 97 on a per game basis in nine cat last year. This would be way too big of a jump for me. We didn't see Luca almost at any point last year, warranting this level of selection. In fact, if you're like, well, why was he down the stretch? He was worse actually. He shot 41% from the field and 68 at the foul line with more turnovers per game when he had complete run of the, the town in Dallas. He was outside the top 130 at that point. So no thank you. I will not take Luka Doncic this year. And if he happens to be a top 20, I will tip my cap to the folks that did it, but it ain't for me. Drew Holiday at 19.2 is the next man on the list. And I like him in 19.2, actually. Uh, He was number 12 over the last two months last year, basically when Anthony Davis started sitting things out on a per-game basis. He was number 12. There are a lot of guys around him. You know, AD went away, but Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, J.J. Redick, Derek Favors, Zion Williamson, all these guys came in. What does that mean for Drew Holiday from a volume standpoint? Well, I would reckon that you could assume his volume is going to be not that dissimilar from what it was when it was just AD he was playing with. It might even be lower. I'm a little bit less enthusiastic about Drew this year. I feel like everybody at the same time is saying most underrated player in the NBA, and if everybody's saying it, you're no longer underrated. He's not a sleeper, guys. He's going in the top 20. There's a hope that he... Plays a heavy load of games, and yeah, he probably sat some games out last year for the tank at 67, but who's to say that that won't happen towards the end of this season again? They'll be decent, but they're, to me, not a playoff team in the West yet. He has a lot of sharing to do. He's not going to be the sole point guard on this team. Steals block's going to be great. Scoring's going to be solid. Rebounding's going to be okay. He's got good field goal percent for a guard. His free throw percent hopefully regresses back towards a higher career mark, but he's going to have some turnovers. He'll have a lot of them, I think, this year, as he's expected to do more creation. And, you know, again, I'm arguing against him, but at 19.2, which is where he is here, 
I have no problem with that. It's actually the 18th name on the list, as it were, so we're now halfway through the second round. I'm good with him going towards the end of the second round, but I'm seeing a lot of folks jumping on him in the first. Uh, Things are going to be a little bit screwy in New Orleans this year. I mean, he's going to have a great season, and he's a great basketball player, but everybody's acting like AD left, and then the runway just got cleared out. But there's even more log jamming going on there. And there's going to be a lot of adjustment stuff. Devin Booker's ADP is also 19.2. I'm going to take a hard pass on that one in nine category leagues. I do think that the addition of Ricky Rubio is a good thing for Booker. But I also, I have to point to the fact that he was number 42 in nine cat last year. He doesn't steal or block shots at all. He played 35 minutes a game last season, but only managed 64 games. He hasn't shown himself to be healthy. Doesn't get defensive stats. Turnovers are exceptionally high. Yes, the other stuff is terrific. His scoring is great. His assists were solid. They may come down this year. And his field goal and free throw percent were both good last season. He fixed his field goal percent. So that was one big step in the right direction. But a health, defensive stats, and turnovers, I don't know that those are getting fixed overnight. And, again, with Rubio around, you likely see a slight dip in assists. So I don't know what is the thing here with Booker that we're looking at to say, here's a guy that's going to make a leap from top 45, which, by the way, worse than that by totals because of the injury stuff. But let's ignore the injury issue for a minute and just say top 45 by per game. How does that guy leap into the top 20 unless he completely fixes something? And I don't see the obvious fix. If he cuts the turnovers down from four to three, that bumps you up a little bit. A little, but if the assists come down as well and the percentages stay around where the... I mean, I don't know how those go up anymore. I really don't know where he can make his gains this season. I struggle to see it. Andre Drummond, 20.6 is the ADP on this one. He's actually the number 20 guy drafted overall, and I love him at number 20. I'll try not to gush too much about Drummond in this particular spot, but he was so good late last year exceptional on the season he was number 17 on a per game basis played 79 games which put him at number 13 by totals and we've talked about this before over the last three months last year he was number three in the nba behind james harden and paul george three guys and i don't know what the general reticence is here around him if there actually is any but i i mean If he's really going at 20.6, that's unbelievable. He did not go at 20.6 in our industry mock. I'll tell you right now, he went at 16, which is far closer to where he should go, and I am totally fine with somebody taking him on the turn. I know that there's a free throw thing that you'd have to deal with there, but he was taking five a game and making 66% of them. That hurts you, but it doesn't kill you. Not when he's given you 16 rebounds a game those last three months of the year. Two steals and almost two blocks. He was incredible. Absolutely incredible. And you're not hearing a whole lot about him. You know? It's really something. And he was better than that the last two months. Not for any reason other than other guys just got a little bit worse, but still. I love it. If you can get Andre Drummond, you're 20. You're in business. Trey Young, 21.3. Mm, I don't know, man. He's going too high. This, one, this was one of those guys that maybe if he was getting drafted in the 30s, 40s, you start to think, oh, there's a little bit of upside there. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. I, we've talked about this ad nauseum. He's going to have a good year. You know, he was a top 40 guy when he started to figure it out down the stretch last season, and he could get better than that. And if there's durability, he could be a 20-something guy. Maybe he could even eclipse his 21.3 by one or two slots. But he's by no means a safe pick, and there's no upside here at all. There's no chance you're taking a guy who finishes in the first round. Drummond could. Drew Holiday could, maybe. Doubt it. Kemba, nah. Jimmy Butler, maybe. Paul George, if he plays. There aren't that many of those guys floating around. The next guy, 
Ch- hey, there's a chance. Rudy Gobert, 21.8 is his ADP on Yahoo. I'd rather have Drummond by a lot. And I think you're starting to see those two guys separate themselves a little bit. For the entire season last year, remember, Andre got off to a little bit of a slow start. For the entire season, Rudy Gobert was right in front of him. They were 16 and 17. But Rudy's been playing this summer with Team France. We've seen him alternate healthy and unhealthy seasons. When he's on the floor, though, he's a second-round guy. And it's an easy one. Big rebounds, big blocks, some steals, great field goal percent, not a good free-throw shooter. You know what you're getting there. You got to draft free throwy guys in Roto if Rudy is your main center. But if he's your main center, you're in great shape and blocks, field goal percent, rebound, and you just have to make sure you don't biff those categories while you're making up for the other ones. And he pairs exceptionally well with this is like a wine. He pairs exceptionally well with a guy like a James Harden. Big free throw numbers early. Steph Curry, really good free throw numbers early. I don't know that there's anybody else at the top of that first round that really corresponds quite that same way where you could then almost stomach it. I mean, you're going to need another really good free throw shooter to counterbalance Rudy Gobert, but they're out there. Maybe you could sneak Danilo Gallinari in the middle rounds or something. Miles Turner at 23.5 is the next one on the list. I like him. I, I, I mean... I'm not going to say I'd rather take Miles Turner over Rudy Gobert, but at least he's not killing you any percentages. He was number 26 on a per-game basis. Rudy has the massive edge in field goal percent and rebounding. And believe it or not, he had an edge in scoring as well. Defensive stats are not that far apart, but Miles does have the better free throw percent. So an argument could be made. I just don't know that he gets better in the areas where he was deficient. And Miles Turner, not a great field goal percent center, He's an okay consolation prize if you miss out on the guys above him. And you could pick between Miles Turner and Nick Vucevic, who had a better per-game season last year and totals. He played 80 games. Was it a career? Was it a contract year situation? Maybe. Certainly, the upside is higher with Vooch. And if you have blocks in hand from an earlier pick, you know maybe you had Anthony Davis in the first round. Maybe you had Cat or Giannis. One of these guys in the first round that's putting up big blocks. Then you could stomach going Vooch, who has lower blocks than a Miles Turner or a Rudy Gobert. But good steals, better assists, better free throw numbers, good rebounds. Just a little bit more across the board, a little more scoring than those other guys as well. There's a method to the madness, certainly, on this front. And that is 24 picks, but we'll just do one more. We're not going by rounds here. We're going to go in chunks of 25. And I'm doing that because I really wanted to get this guy into this first chunk because of how ridiculous it is. And that's Ben Simmons, who's going at 24.9. This is, of course, a big-time eight-cat adjustment and points league adjustment on top of that as well. There is no nine-category situation where Ben Simmons should be going inside the top 25. He was number 66 on a per-game basis last year. He did play in a lot of games, so that's a a feather in his cap. That got him to number 43 overall by totals. That's better. But 17 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists, 2.2 defensive stats, 56% from the field. Do we think Ben Simmons is going to fix his free throw stroke? I'm not trusting it. He was one of the worst in the NBA in that department. Had one of the biggest negative impacts you're just you're not taking him at that point when there are other guys available who aren't going to crush you and are giving you more in the categories that you can build around. Take a shot with one of these guys three or four behind Ben Simmons. There's just no reason at all to grab him at that point. Where's the upside? Even if he fixes his free throw stroke, he still doesn't make a three-pointer. His turnovers are going to be super high. Now, admittedly, if he fixes the free throw thing, he does jump from 60-something to probably 30-something, maybe higher. That's a big, big jump for him. But are you banking on that with your second or now third first pick of the third round? No way. His free throw stroke did get better last year. He went from 56 to 60. But it's not the kind of big leap that you might have been hoping for. And if he goes up by another 4%, that's not enough to cover that difference. And that for all intents and purposes, is as far as we're going to go today. 
What did we tell you about? We told you about Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. We told you about our buddies at mybookie.ag. We told you about the contest running at Hoop Ball Fantasy on Twitter to win a free draft guide. We told you about the draft guide sale. And we told you about the fact that the industry mock, which is rumbling along, and I bothered to check it here at the end of the show, and it is in round nine now. So it's working through, working its way through round nine as of the time of this recording. So just a few rounds left. That'll be done probably by the end of today. If not, first thing tomorrow, we can start getting some guests on. And at the latest, we'll start going over that next week. My goal would be to start talking to those pros this week, but we'll see how it all shakes out. I think if you had to plan it on your calendar, you'd probably say uh, next week. We're going to get each of those 11 pros coming on, one after the other, one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. They're all coming on. Talk about their teams. Talk about the picks. It's going to be a hoot. I can't wait. Tomorrow, the marvelous Neil Rochelani will join us to talk about the next 25 ADPs on Yahoo, what they got right, what they got wrong. Nothing. So I think the overall theme, if we were going to wrap up today's breakdown, is that Yahoo's gotten a little bit aggressive with early point guards. And I get it because there just aren't that many in the next grouping of guys we're going to talk about. The, the first 25 that we just discussed has uh, Steph Curry as a point guard. I know James Harden's a shooting guard, but his numbers are very point guardy-esque, and he might actually have eligibility in some leagues. Damian Lillard, uh, Bradley Beal, shooting guard, but he'll be running that, that offense. Kemba Walker, Luka Doncic, Drew Holiday, Trey Young. Even if you wipe out a few of my maybes, you're still talking about six or seven point guards in that chunk. And then the next one... Do we call Donovan Mitchell one? Maybe. We'll cut him in just for for argument's sake. Chris Paul, Darren Fox, D'Angelo Russell, Mike Conley, and that's it. So five max, and that's only if you include Donovan Mitchell. Otherwise, it's four. So there's only four point guards, really, in the 25 through 50 range. You have a couple of shooting guards, just like you did in the first group. Donovan Mitchell being one of them. I don't think we can count Conley and Donovan Mitchell as point guards. They're on the same damn team now. In any event, four. We're going to go with four. A few shooting guards like a Zach Levine, CJ McCollum, will get you a few assists. But the point of all of this is, I think the reason Yahoo got so aggressive with early point guards, particularly second-round point guards, Kemba, Luka, Trey, all in the second round, Drew Holiday, all in the second round, and, you know, honorary mention to Devin Booker, is that once you get past that point, they become much more difficult to find. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but the 50 to 75 range is even more point guard barren. Kyle Lowry, Eric Bledsoe, and Terry Rozier, I believe, are the only ones. Now, maybe Lonzo Ball. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's one. Uh, Then you've got like a John Moran, Ricky Rubio coming up in that next chunk of guys. So it does, I think, decrease a little bit. You've got like six or seven in the first 25, and then it's four, basically, in each of the next three groupings of 25. So Yahoo said, well, we better push them up the ranks because no one's going to get them later. And I think it's doing all of us a disservice because now you've got to grab somebody in there because they've pushed them all up to the front. They forced our hand by putting the ADPs so low or high, depending on how you want to discuss it. I'm going to say low because it's a lower number. They have pushed their ADPs so low, so costly, that if you don't take one of those first six or seven point guards, then you have to drop way down the list. Now you have to make the choice of which one you actually feel like venturing out onto a, a limb to get. Steph, Dame, Kyrie. I forgot Kyrie Irving. That's another one in the top 25. Russell Westbrook. How did I forget another one in the top 25? What is that now? Eight, nine of them? I guess you better get it early. Yahoo, very aggressive with point guards early. I would tend to disagree, as we as we just heard over the last hour, with the rankings on a lot of those guys. I mean, Dame is going early because he's healthy generally but on a per game basis this is too high Kyrie he's dinged up Russell Westbrook has the free throw thing Kemba Walker durability's pushing him up the charts Luka that's too expensive 
Drew Holiday, will he finish the season? What about all the new teammates? Trey Young, that's expensive. They got real expensive with these guys. The second grouping of point guards is a little bit more affordable. Chris Paul, Mike Conley, I think those guys are slightly better deals. But there is a drop-off once you get past that grouping, really. So I think we get it. I think we understand what you're going for here, Yahoo. All right, 55 minutes into this thing, we'll put a bow on it. I am Dan Bespris. Please do take a moment to follow me on Twitter, at Dan Bespris. It is a distinct pleasure to have new listeners coming on every week at this time of year. This is the ramp up. I love this time of season. So hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. If this is your first experience on Fantasy NBA Today, if you enjoy it, and you continue to enjoy it, please do take a moment to rate and review the podcast. Very easy if you're using a computer to do it. You just click the link that we post on Twitter all the time. It'll take you to the show webpage, and then you punch the button that opens iTunes on your computer. If you're on your smart device, your mobile device, open the podcast app. Step one, it's sort of like a quick five-stepper. Step one, open the podcast app. Step two, hit the search button in the bottom right corner. Type in the name Fantasy NBA Today and search for it. Step three, click on the show title, which should be up near the top with the big logo. Step four, at the new page you're at, scroll all the way to the bottom. It's just below the bottom, actually, is the rate and review section. Step five, click the five-star review. And if you want to write something, even better. Have a wonderful Monday, everybody. That's the end of today's show. Again, check out all the amazing stuff that we've been talking about. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the noobs. This is going to be a fun year. I, I'm, I'm feeling it, man. September 16th, the week of Yahoo ADPs. Pro Week's coming up. It's a good time to be getting into fantasy basketball. Talk to you tomorrow, everybody. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.